today we will uh, discuss the topic uh, superconductivity we all know that on the basis of uh, electric current conductivity materials can be classified into conductors uh, insulators uh, semiconductors etc but in 1911 a scientist named h camerling onus Camerling Onus discovered an entirely new phenomenon called superconductivity. Before going into the details of superconductivity, I think we can discuss the variation of resistance with temperature in the case of uh, semiconductors and normal metals and metals with high resistance, that is metals uh, which we use as resistors. See, if we take the case of uh, nichrome, the variation of resistivity with temperature is like this. At absolute zero, the resistivity has a finite value. Even at absolute zero, the resistance is not zero or the resistivity is not zero but it has a finite value and as the temperature increases the resistivity varies in a linear manner but uh, this is the case for nickel but if we if we take the case of uh, semiconductors the variation of resistivity with temperature is like this as temperature increases, resistance or resistivity decreases in an exponential way. What is the case when we take normal metals? The variation of resistivity or resistance with temperature in the case of normal metals is like this. At higher temperatures, the resistance or resistivity varies in a linear manner. We can see this type of variation in most of the metals, especially in the case of platinum. That's why we use platinum in the case of platinum resistance thermometer. As temperature decreases around this region, around this region we can see a T raise to 5 dependence T raise to 5 dependence this is called block Brunesen law as we decrease the temperature further here the graph is almost flat which means in this region the resistance or resistivity is entirely independent of temperature so in this region we have a linear variation and in this region we have a non-linear variation which actually varies as t raised to 5 and in this region the graph is constant it is independent of temperature so the resistivity consists of two parts rho is equal to rho zero plus rho of t the temperature independent part and a temperature dependent part this temperature independent part is due to the impurities or imperfections present in the crystal Camerling Monas was doing experiments in low temperature physics. In 1911, he discovered an entirely new type of phenomenon. It is actually a new type of phase transition. In some metals, as temperature decreases 
resistance or resistivity decreases and at a particular temperature resistance drops to zero abruptly resistance or resistivity and this particular temperature at which the resistance drops to zero resistance abruptly drops to zero is called critical temperature this phenomenon is called superconductivity and materials exhibiting this property are called superconductors this temperature tc is also called super conducting transition temperature super conducting transition temperature as i have already said this is a phase transition this is a new type of phase transition this is not a crystallographic phase transition uh, there is no change in lattice parameters of the material if we take the xrd of the material before the critical temperature which means above the critical temperature and below the critical temperature the structure of the material remains the same it is not like a liquid solid phase transition it is not a magnetic phase transition or it is not a order disorder phase transition as we can see in some metals but this is an entirely new type of phase transition this is actually a macroscopic quantum phenomenon okay the properties of the superconductivity or the characteristics of superconductivity based on the observed experimental phenomenon are one materials which normally behave as good conductors do not show superconductivity materials which normally behave as good conductors do not show superconductivity example gold you know gold is a very good conductor but gold does not show superconductivity in its pure form two materials which normally has high resistance show superconductivity example lead so in this case we have an anti correlation materials which usually behave as good conductors do not show superconductivity whereas materials which have high resistance normally behaves in a super conducting manner when cooled to very low temperatures kamerling on us selected mercury for his experiment why he chose mercury because mercury a metal uh, which is in liquid state so it is easily purifiable we can get purified mercury very easily when he did experiment with mercury as i told earlier the temperature the resistivity decreases with the temperature and at a particular temperature 
resistivity drops to zero at 4.2 Kelvin at about 4.2 Kelvin he attained this low temperature with the help of liquid helium he is actually uh, fortunate that the liquefaction of helium occurred at a temperature around 4.2 Kelvin or the boiling point of helium is about 4.2 Kelvin some other metals like lead exhibits superconductivity at a temperature of about 7.2 Kelvin and so on okay so these two properties shows an anti-correlation third one transition metals having odd number of valence electrons we know transition metals show variable valencies and transition metals which show odd number of valence like 1 uh, 3 5 7 etc uh, are more favorable for superconductivity transition metals with odd number of valence electrons are more favorable for superconductivity for if we take the metals in a particular row of periodic table and plot a graph with the transition temperature along y-axis and the square of its atomic number along x-axis the graph will be a straight line the graph can be a straight line with its intercept on the y-axis or graph can be a straight line with its intercept on the negative y-axis actually uh, if we take the negative y-axis also and extend this graph we can get the intercept here or the graph can pass through origin as well so this is the variation of uh, critical temperature with the square of atomic number for metals in a particular row of the periodic table actually this is uh, this graph is for mercury that. that's what the transition number is for 0.2 kelvin and four, four is this one. And fifth one, a small atomic mass and a small atomic mass followed by small atomic volume favors superconductivity. are the five points we should remember these are also called Matthias rules materials which normally behave as good conductors do not show superconductivity it's point number one uh, gold is an example materials which normally behave as bad conductors show superconductivity like lead three transition metals with odd number of valence electrons like 1, 3, 5 or 7 show superconductivity. 4, if we plot a graph with the critical temperature along y-axis and the square of atomic number along x-axis for elements in a particular row. This is valid only for elements in a particular row the graph will be a straight line 4 5 small atomic mass followed by small atomic volume favors superconductivity since 
resistivity is equal to zero or resistance is equal to zero, uh, we have so many uh, technological applications of superconductivity because we can transmit electric current through a material without energy dissipation, without power dissipation because we know in electric conductivity resistance is responsible for power dissipation. So if there is no resistance there will be no power dissipation, there will be no energy dissipation and we can transmit electrical energy without ener any energy loss. But the critical temperature is very very low. It is about 4.2 Kelvin for mercury, 7.2 Kelvin for lead. So this low critical temperature restricts the use of superconductors in daily life. But in 1980s, mixed oxides were found to exhibit superconductivity at a high temperature. At a high temperature means at a comparatively high temperature. Mixed oxides like uh, mercury, barium, calcium, copper oxide, which has a critical temperature of about 135 Kelvin and uh, yttrium, barium, copper oxide, which has a critical temperature of about 90 Kelvin. Experiments with these materials are rather easier because rather easier as well as cheap because we can use liquid nitrogen for performing these experiments instead of liquid helium. We can use liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is uh, much cheaper than liquid uh, helium. Actually, helium can easily be obtained from the coastal area of Kerala. We have a great supply of helium uh, from the monocyte sand which is abundant in the coastal area of uh, Kerala. Actually, in monocyte sand, uh, we have uh, so many alpha particles. Alpha particles are nothing but uh, helium nucleus. Okay, leave. Now we can uh, study the response of magnetic field. Response of magnetic field. If we apply a small magnetic field to a superconducting material in its superconducting state, that material expels the magnetic flux out of the material or let us consider a material in a magnetic field you know the magnetic flux is passing through the material this material is a normal conductor or, or the material is now in a normal conducting state that is the temperature is greater than critical temperature. Magnetic flux penetrates through the material. Now, if we cool this material to a temperature less than critical temperature, the flux will be expelled out of the material. The flux will be expelled out. This is at a temperature less than superconducting transition temperature. Or if I increase the magnetic field, the flux gradually penetrates the material and as the magnetic flux penetrates the material, 
the superconductivity will start to decrease and as i go on increasing the magnetic field and when i reach a particular magnetic field called critical magnetic field the material the superconductivity will be destroyed completely that is this case occurs either when the temperature is greater than critical field or when the magnetic field is greater than critical field either when the temperature is greater than critical temperature or when the magnetic field is greater than critical magnetic field here the magnetic field is less than critical magnetic field if i plot a graph with magnetic field along y axis and temperature along x axis for superconductors we will get a graph like this uh, here if i take mercury as the example we know the critical temperature for mercury is about 4.2 kelvin and the critical magnetic field for mercury is about 42 milli tesla here we have the normal state of mercury and here we have the superconducting state so along this graph along this curve the normal state is in equilibrium with the superconducting state from this uh, graph we can obtain an empirical relation given by h c at t is equal to h c at 0 into 1 minus t by t c the whole square which means as temperature decreases from critical temperature we have to apply we have to increase the critical field critical magnetic field to destroy the superconductivity or as temperature increases from zero kelvin to critical temperature when temperature increases from zero kelvin to critical temperature the critical magnetic field decreases in the last session i told you the superconductor expels magnetic flux out of the material this phenomenon is called meissner effect in a superconducting state the material will expel the flux out of the material and this phenomenon is called meissner effect the material expels the flux out from it means the material exhibits a diamagnetic response to the applied magnetic field we know when we apply a magnetic field to a material to a specimen that material undergoes magnetization and the resultant magnetic induction inside the material is given by b is equal to mu zero into h plus m so this is this h is the applied magnetic field and m is the magnetization produced and b is the resultant magnetic induction and mu zero we know the permeability of phase space and since this material expels the flux out of the material this b will be zero the magnetic induction inside the material will be zero that is 
h plus m is equal to 0 or h is equal to minus m or h by m is equal to minus 1 or what is h by m? h by m is magnetic susceptibility. Magnetic susceptibility is minus 1. That is in the superconducting state, the material is a perfect diamagnetic and it has the maximum value, the susceptibility of a diamagnetic material, the maximum value of susceptibility of a diamagnetic material is minus 1. So, perfect diamagnetism is the property of a superconductor, perfect diamagnetism. I have already, uh, I have already told you that perfect uh, conductivity is also a property. So now these two properties, perfect conductivity and perfect uh, diamagnetism. See, this magnetic field which we have to apply to destroy the superconductivity need not be an external magnetic field. The magnetic field can be from within the material due to the current passing through the superconductor. If we consider a superconductor in the form of a ring and if we pass an electric current through the material, through the ring, the magnetic field inside the material is given by B is equal to mu zero into I by 2R where I is the current through the material and R is the radius of the material and from this expression I can write I is equal to B 2R sorry 2BR by mu zero and if this current destroys the superconductivity this current is called critical current and is denoted by IC. So critical current is another quantity which destroys the superconductivity. We have already discussed critical temperature destroys superconductivity, critical magnetic field destroys superconductivity now critical current destroys superconductivity instead of critical current we can also write critical uh, current density denoted by jc which is equal to ic by a where is the area of the superconductor now we have three quantities critical temperature critical magnetic field and critical current density critical temperature tc critical magnetic field hc critical current density jc if i plot a graph connecting these three physical quantities with a critical temperature along this axis critical magnetic field and critical current density we will get a surface like this, almost like this, it's like this, which means if the material exists inside this curve with critical temperature less than Tc, with magnetic field less than Hc, with current density less than Jc, the material will be in the superconducting state. Otherwise, the material will be in normal state. If any one of this physical quantity 
exceeds its critical value either the temperature or the magnetic field or the current density exceeds its critical value the material will go back to its normal state 